hello everyone welcome to this video so in this video we will be talking about well defined problems and solutions so in my previous video we discussed in details what problem solving agents are and what are the different components of a problem solving agent and out of that we identified that goal and problem formulation are the first two initial steps which uh, a problem solving agent follows so hence it is important for us to identify what a problem is and how basically it is represented okay so talking about a well defined problem it is uh, given by the um, acronym as a well formed formula that, that is wff or simply a well defined problem okay so what is this this is basically a representation of a particular problem into uh, its respective categories so this is nothing but a representation okay so when we are talking about defining a problem properly it means that we are actually facilitating the representation of the problem in a very very methodical manner okay so the problem basically has any problem you consider any problem it might be a real life problem or it might be any experimental problem that problem is divided into four different components the first component is always the initial state initial state so initial state basically forms the first component of a well defined problem and it is the point at which the agent would start okay since we are talking about searching as a whole so this is the point exactly from where the searching begins the second is a successor function this is a successor function so this is the second component of a well defined problem and this is uh, basically we will talk also in details about the successor function so it is a description of all the possible actions which are available from the to the agent for example this is my start point and the number of possible states are 3 so these can be considered as the successor function 1 successor function 2 and the successor function 3 okay the third one is the gold test gold test since all the intelligent agents they are the primary objective is to maximize their performance measure and in order to uh, maximize their performance measure they have to set respective goals so we have to incorporate this as a primary component which will determine whether the state that the current whether the current state that the agent is in is basically a goal state or not suppose this the agent needs to travel from point a to point b a goal test will make sure if this is basically point b is basically a goal or not and the fourth and the last component is a path cost now all practical activities in our lives it involves certain amount of cost cost does not simply mean only monetary in involvement cost will also mean the time the computational resources collectively the financial status as well as the different um, step cost that means the different environmental factors are also considered here the expenses related to environmental conditions are also um, in included here okay so let us take this up one by one so first of all let us talk about the initial state so initial state as already mentioned it is basically the that state where the agent is in that state where the agent starts okay so in my previous video we talked about an agent who was holidaying in the uh, in romania and he was in the city of arid okay in the city of arid in romania so here let's let my agent be x and my x was in room initially in arid from where he had to reach up to bucharest okay from where he had to reach up to bucharest right so this point is basically the initial point of my agent 
initial point of my agent and the initial point of the agent can be represented in this format that currently the agent is in array so this way i can simply write down the initial state okay so initial state is in array so this is the point from where the agent starts its search the next one is that we'll talk about is the successor function successor function so this is a function and it will be comprising of the possible actions okay it will comprise of the possible actions which are available to the agent at any point of time available to the agent at any point of time okay so if we are talking about a particular state x so the successor function success successor successor function let's represent it in this way okay successor function x would be returning me this particular function would be returning me a set of action and the successor so definitely all the functions if it is not if explicitly mentioned that it is it does not have any return type we have to make sure that that function may return something okay and here this successor function will return an ordered pair ordered pair of uh, components or ordered pair which has the action and the successor so if the agent which this agent that i am talking about okay so if this agent initially starts from array okay so um the successor function for this particular problem would be returning me something like this suppose in my previous um video if you go back i gave you three different routes from the initial point from where through which the agent can get its travel or make its travel so this is uh maybe via cbu or maybe via timisoera or maybe via zerind so these three are the three different cities through which the agent can make his travel from arid to bucharest right so what will the successor function uh, re uh, return so this will return me an ordered pair where it will be saying that go cbu then he will be in cbu then after that in sorry after that it the second option might be go timisoera and then if he does this action the successor will be in timisoera and the last option may be go zerind and its successor function would be in zerind so these are basically whatever we have to talk about in a successor function it is returning me an ordered pair where the ordered pair would be showing me a action and a successor all right so we have to make sure that we also mention the successor and um, along with the action which is there okay so uh, successor is the next possible state basically if we are considering the next possible state after making an action so that will be my return of the uh, that would be returned by the successor function okay so this is like from this point if i begin okay from this point if i begin that it is going go to subu 
what should be my successor he will be in cbu now next action i mean or the other action if it is go temi soera it will be the next act, uh, successor would be in timiswara the agent will be in timiswara right if he takes the action as go to timiswara and if the uh, if uh, the agent takes the action as go zerind go via zerind then the next successor would be that the agent will be in zerind okay so this is what we mean by the successor function so so the next um point that we will be discussing is the next point that we will be discussing is uh, the third one which is the third one which is uh, the goal test okay so goal test so what does this goal test do so goal test is basically giving me a uh, uh, determining whether a given state is the goal state so it determines whether given state is the goal state okay so if we are considering the previous uh, example itself okay so um suppose uh, the agent is an arid okay and it has to reach bucharest so this is your goal test okay so this is the goal bucharest is the goal right so sometimes there is an explicit set of possible goal test and the test simply checks whether the given state is one of them okay and the agent's goal in romania is basically a singleton set so in this goal set the last goal that should be here is basically a state where the agent would be in bucharest okay the current state should be showing as in bucharest this should be the goal okay uh, now um, sometimes the goal is specified by an abstract property uh, rather than an explicitly enumerated set of states okay and how do we uh, can can we uh, cite any example for this abstract property okay uh, a very common example for this is uh, in chess basically the goal state is to reach a state called the checkmate where the opponent's king is under attack and he can't escape right so whenever we are giving checkmate we actually cannot explicitly mention any um, enumerated set of sets uh, enumerated set or enumerated state like this okay we have to go we have to explicitly find out a condition where the checkmate con situation is observed okay checkmate situation is observed so once this checkmate is uh, achieved then we can consider that the goal has been achieved but this is not an explicitly enumerated that means we do not have a very very definitive state where it should reach but we we should I identify that whenever there is a checkmate it is the goal state and that can be anywhere on the chessboard okay or an, after any number of steps now the last one that we will be talking about is the path cost okay path cost so let us look into this first so this path cost is also a function okay so this is also a function which will assign a numeric cost to the path numeric cost to the path okay so each path basically this numeric cost would be concerned with each path not only just one path but each path if the problem solving agent chooses a cost function that reflects its own performance measure then it is easier okay so if we associate some cost like in uh, utility based agent we saw that how happy uh, the agent would be after he is performing certain action so that how factor is basically basically a measurable quantity and it will find out that it is associating a numeric cost it is giving a reward point to that particular step so this numeric cost which is associated with a path that particular concept or uh, process we call it as a 
associating a path cost to that particular step okay so if we are considering the agent is moving from arid to let's say through Cebu and finally reaching Bucharest okay finally reaching Bucharest so it is broken down into multiple number of steps and from here to here there will be a numeric value x from here to here there will be a numeric value y so this is basically the cost from reaching arid to Cebu and this is the cost from reaching from Cebu to Bucharest okay so this actually since we have broken down into steps so this is also known as the step cost however your path cost will be a collection of x plus y so x plus y will be giving you the path cost okay so how do we represent this step cost it is denoted by c x a comma y okay so here if um uh, we have to reach from point x to point y okay so then we will represent let's say i will rub this off so that it does not confuse us okay so this is if it is point x and it is point y so c x and y so this is basically the point the starting point and the destination uh, that means the point from where we are starting the journey to the next step so in in the first scenario it will be from x y would be this one and not this okay and in the next step it will be represent uh, replaced with x and then it is replaced by y okay so basically the step cost uh, of taking action a to go from state x to state y is denoted using this so this is your action and we have to remember that at each step x replaces the value of y okay or x replaces the point of y so if we are considering uh, let's say the cost of reaching from x to y which is the point c view then we can represent something like this which is arid okay and then probably uh, we are taking a drive and then we will say that Cebu okay so this is how we can um, represent the cost okay and um, we will assume that this cost or this step cost basically are non-negative in nature okay they should not be negative or they, if it is zero it does not make any sense but it should be non-negative in nature talking about a solution to a problem so basically the solution the when i am talking about solution this is basically i am talking about this so this solution if we need to define it in a proper manner so this solution to a problem is a path from initial state okay so initial state to the goal state and we also have to measure the path cost function and an optimal solution which will be generating the lowest path so this is basically uh, if we are finding a solution to a problem first of all we will have to formulate the problem and that formulation will be involving what what parameters it will be involving the initial state then it will have the successor function then it will have the goal test and it will have the path cost so if we need to find out the solution to a problem initially this formulation needs to be done and how do we find out the solution we have to find out the path from initial state to the goals test or goal state and we have to consider the path cost in between and the successor function of course will always be a part of it so finding a solution to a problem is mapping the initial state to the goal state keeping into consideration the various types of path costs involved okay so in my next video we will be just picking up a few examples
so that it this uh, particular concept of formulating a problem becomes easier and we can formulate any problem in a well defined manner so that is all for now uh, we'll further um, look into this in my next video thank you